I just got back from a road trip from getting parts in Tennessee. Now, if you're not sure what part I was picking up, here's a clue. Let's unload the work truck. I forgot I also picked up a Tyvek slip for Fran's 240, but my lip is currently on her 240, so we are going to take this one for now so we can put it onto mine. And this is the quarter panel that we got. Drove eight and a half hours each way to get it. And if you missed out in the last two videos, basically the quarter panel that I had for this car that I was gonna put on, I found a little bit too much rust on it. So I straight traded someone in Tennessee for this one because he only needed a rear section of it and he didn't need the whole thing. So now we have a rust for you on. At first glance, this quarter panel looks absolutely flawless. Some of the main points I'd want to check out are right here on the bottom and the bottom rear. These usually rust out first if they are going to rust, which I'm actually can't tell if that's rust or not, but everything on the inside looks pretty good. And that is what I was looking for. I was most focused on that. But unfortunately, this quarter panel was previously cut before I was at the scene and they cut it right here, which is too short. It's supposed to go out to here. That's okay, I can make up for that. But there is something that I did not notice while I was picking this quarter panel up. I'm kind of nervous to find out if this quarter panel is junk. And I'm curious if you guys picked up on this as well. Just by looking at this, it looks fine, right? It just looks paint faded or whatever. But if you notice, there's no body line. It's filled in. So that got me thinking. I was like, all right, there's definitely Bondo on here. Let me show you what the body line looks like just for reference. It's this little guy. All right. This one has no body line. You can kind of see where it was. But then when I put my hand on it like this, even through the glove I can feel it. It's kind of bumpy and wavy, which means it's full of Bondo. So now I'm looking at this even more in depth, thinking, all right, it's filled with Bondo. It's probably damaged. Right here, you can see a little crunch. That does not look too good. And there's body filler in the crunch. You can see this line is a little too crisp. It's supposed to be rounded out kind of like this, nice and soft, but this is like to a point. And I also noticed the antenna has a little crack in it, or I guess the antenna delete, this is where it should be, which I wasn't too concerned about because I was probably just gonna delete mine anyways. What I wanna do before I make any further decisions, if I wanna use this quarter panel or not, is I need to sand off all that body filler there so I can see what is under the quarter panel. If it's a tiny dent that I can have so in PDR, I'll still use it. But if the whole quarter panel is completely destroyed, it's back on the hunt. <sighs> can you believe I drove all the way to Tennessee for this quarter panel that's damaged? Oh, I feel so stupid. <laughs> I was focusing on the wrong things. I was like, I just need the bottom, you know, this stuff. I figured, you know, it's in Tennessee. Everything's nice in Tennessee. No rust. I didn't account for body damage. I forgot that that's a thing. And especially for a 240SX, they're all damaged. So I should have expected this. And I don't want to put any blame on the guy I picked this up from because he just picked up this whole half cut that I got this off of. So he didn't even know either. So I got my sandpaper and I'll start sanding this off. Okay, you guys are not gonna believe this. Look at how much Bondo is on here. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's got holes in it. And the Bondo was applied on top of paint. It's supposed to either go to bare metal or to epoxy primer. Basically what that means is I'm not gonna use this quarter panel. What would you guys do if you were in this situation? I'm just curious. I feel like this is just a little too beat up to be putting on to the car after all of this work I've put onto it. Cause then I'll have to do all of this over again. That kind of defeats the purpose of putting a new quarter panel on. You know what I mean? I really want to show you guys this edge. Check this out. Not too shabby, but yeah, you can definitely tell it was crumpled in right there. So I bet that's at least an inch thick of Bondo. I honestly would have been better off using the quarter panel that I traded for. So I guess I'm kind of working backwards now. So, looking for a rust-free quarter panel for a driver's side left-hand drive or passenger side right-hand drive. I don't want to say that whole trip was for nothing because I did have a lot of fun going down there, catching up with everyone and meeting even more people. And also I got this Type-X lip. So let's just put this back on the car because it looks way better with a lip. This doesn't even have any zip ties or any mounts on it. It's just really nice form-fitting. It does have some cracks in it. 
but overall it's a pretty good lit. Cool. Well, I don't know what to do with this now. Does anyone need a Bondo quarter panel? It's got no rust on it. <laughs> on the downside, we have a busted quarter panel. But on the plus side, the car looks sick. Well, since we determined that we cannot use this quarter panel, and I got rid of the other quarter panel, we can now finish removing the rest of the quarter panel on the car. And also I need to get the rest of this wheel well off. While I'm looking for parts, might as well knock that out. Now I can't really see any of these spot welds here or on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is use the wire wheel to try and expose some of that metal. And hopefully that'll expose the spot welds a little better. And a good rule of thumb if you're going to use any rotational tool, especially a wire wheel like this, you want to tuck anything loose away or just take them out, which I'm actually just going to take these out because it's not like I ever use them. My friend was actually using a wire wheel like this and when the wire wheel caught the string, it went all the way up to his neck and then it stopped. That could have been really bad <laughs> and we're just gonna avoid that happening at all costs. Well, I just realized these strings are stitched into the hood so they're not gonna be able to come out. So I guess we'll just tuck these in then. With all the paint removed, you can see the spot welds much easier. I'm not going to go over this too much because I did that a lot in my last video with the quarter panel. But for example, there's one, there's one. And then what I do next is drill out a pilot hole. That way the spot weld drill bit can be centered. So I've drilled this pilot hole out already. And then the spot weld drill bit just sits right in there. We have all the spot welds drilled out on the very last piece of the quarter panel. And before I take this off, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to start trying to peel back some of these panels. Just make sure that they're free. Nope. Oh, did I miss one right here? It's like stuck on the seam that I grinded. Well, I think the bottom ones are good to go, that's for sure. Yeah, looks like there is a spot weld right here. Well, I'm replacing this anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about the condition of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and see if we can force it. <laughs> it did that all by itself. <laughs> nice. Again, you can see how much dirt was collected inside of here. And this is a rust-free car, I thought. And you'd never guess that there was just rust building up on the inside because of how much junk it holds in there and stores all that moisture. Let's see what goodies we got. Nothing. Oh, actually, this is like a sunroof piece. So now there's really no quarter panel left. And my next step is to continue drilling out these pilot holes along to here to get the rest of the wheel well off. I might have to take this bracing off as well. I'm not sure, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Ah, there's one more right here. But unfortunately, I have a little weld bead on there. Alright, <laughs> now there's really nothing back here. So at this point, every piece of the quarter panel has been removed that I need to remove. And since I don't have anything to put back on it right now, I can still work ahead and remove all of this adhesive that's on here. Because this is going to have to come off regardless. And I'm going to have to put new adhesive on, obviously, once it's all welded back together. So we'll grab our wire wheel and we'll get working on cleaning this up and you know what I might as well prep all of these surfaces to be welded while I'm at it. So we've got this whole inner wheel well prepped. Got all the bare metal exposed. I did leave one spot down here because I wanted to show you guys. See how this is cracked a little bit? 
That crack is going to allow moisture to go in there. And when moisture goes in there, it's going to sit in between these two seams and eventually it'll rust. So if any of you guys have older cars, don't forget to take a look at your seam sealer and make sure it's still good because if it's looking like this, it's eventually gonna rust. Man, I didn't think I could take any more panels off of this car. It looks pretty wild. <laughs> Well, since I'm still looking for 240 parts, I figured it'd be a good time to meet up with my friend Brian. He's going to tell us a little bit about his drift car. What is a drift car, was a drift car, should be a drift car. Should I show the diff? Dude, we got to show the diff. This diff broke in the strangest way possible. So. That was a diff stub. Jesus. How much power are you pushing, man? Pop the hood. Uh. Good day, 170. <laughs> you know, on a bad day, 160. I've never seen that happen on like yeah. a stockish powered car. You want to see the best part? That's it. Got to open the hood with these bad jobs. Oh, dude, love it. This is like Civic things. Hmm? What wheels are these? BBS style 19s. Pretty OEM cool. wheels. Are they actually two-piece? Yeah, real two-piece BBS wheels. I'm too broke to get the center caps for them, so. Yeah, that's all right, man. Rock it like that. It's, it's got lip. It looks good. Well, here's the car. Hot air intake. <laughs> you know, does the job. Love it. This thing doesn't stay on. <laughs> In a BMW, you have oil compartment because it's going to leak it all out. An oil compartment. Dude, um, zip with ties. zip ties. Love it. Gotta have them. And I need to get one of those little compartments. You know, quick release radiator fan, you know. <laughs> I drove home on zip ties before because I lost both of my belts. Sock for the track. Yeah, Might that that's oil. important for the track. But everything else is totally okay. It's okay. This doesn't need to be covered. It's in an isolated spot. You know. I got an ankle kit. Oh. Let's see it. Oh yeah. Which kit is this? Uh, PMC Stage 3 kit. The stock E46 control arms. Didn't have to cut anything, but on nine and a half wheels, I rubbed the front frame rail. Mm. So I had to go bye bye. I see. You know? Over here, when I put the kit on, I had a rip ball joint. I didn't lock tight it because I was going to change it. So that happened and that happened because my wheel fell off. Oh no. Happened somewhere in Wisconsin. I don't know how. If you guys were doubting if he was actually driving home on zip ties, he has video proof. You're not lying. Yo! <laughs> Ingenuity. Get a, get a BMW, guys. Come on. Very messy. We've got a bucket seat, no handbrake. Decent, decent. Gotta keep the dreams alive. <laughs> Gotta remind yourself of the S16 you want. You want a vet? It's an S16, dude. Yeah. That's true. Well, isn't the Mustang technically the S16, like the four cylinder turbo? That was the new BRZ, the new S16. Mm. Everything other than mm -hmm. an actual S chassis. Is but the S16. Let your mind go wild, you know. Pick up where Nissan left off. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. Hell yeah, man. Oh. Bimmer. Bimmer. Dude, if I had a BMW, I'd want it to say bummer. I kind of want to put it upside down. This is it. Nothing special. Nothing crazy, nothing fast. Seat time car, right? Seat time car. For sure. Well, should we get some skating clips? We'll try. <laughs> try our best. Dun, da, da, da. Da, da, da. <laughs> Let me turn the lights on real quick. 
Here it is, the old project. Look okay. at this quarter panel I just picked up. Got Bondo? <laughs> Man. That's solid. That's a lot of Bondo, though. Look at this crease right here. Uh, buff out? I was like, uh, so, out. someone hit something. And then they deleted the body line, too. You can just delete that so I can leave that side alone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like, this is all that the this, car is. This is an S chassis. Yeah. That's solid. Thankfully, the shock towers are solid. This is a door, door. A door, a door doors. It, it doesn't <laughs> let <but the> doors. <laughs> I think you can still drive it. Like this? Yeah. Right? Take it to Florida. You'll be fine. I just have to ratchet strap the door closed or something. <laughs> Ta-da! Straight from the motherland. Mechnic. Big Mechnic. 